your Locked on the New York Rangers, your daily podcast on the New York Rangers. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back, Blue Shirts fans, to episode number 644 of the Locked On New York Rangers podcast. I'm your host, John Chick. Just want to thank you guys, as always, for making Locked On New York Rangers your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. That song right now is Leave the Lights On from our good friends in Pacifier. You can check those guys out anywhere you get your music. And today, I thought we would kind of turn our attention to the recently concluded Ranger development camp. The Rangers had a ton of prospects in camp, you know, drills, scrimmages, the whole nine yards, uh, including all six players that the Rangers took in this year's draft. And a couple of, uh, you know, top prospects were there as well. The camp ran from Monday the 11th through Friday the 15th. And like I said, wanted to talk a little bit more about it at the time. Didn't really do much more than just a passing mention every now and then because obviously free agency was also going on. Rangers were signing Trocek. They were losing players. And uh, we certainly had to talk about that. And we obviously did a couple of Vincent Trocek-centered episodes as well because uh, clearly he was kind of the prize get for the New York Rangers in free agency. And we did an episode last week, though, where we talked about Trocek. We talked about all the different roles that he could end up playing. And as part of the episode, I tossed out some early ideas as far as Ranger line combinations are concerned for opening night and beyond. And I noticed, you know, going both by Twitter and also the comments on YouTube, that it got people talking and a lot of people were throwing out the idea of, you know, maybe one or two of these New York Ranger prospects potentially making the team. And it's certainly possible. I think uh, the names that I've heard the most often from you guys and uh, probably from general New York Ranger media outlets as well is, you know, Bren Othman as well as Will Cooley and the idea that one or maybe even both of them could make the team. I don't think it'll be both. I think probably one at most. But once again, you know, with development camp now having come and gone, I thought we could talk about the camp itself. And also, if any of these New York Rangers, you know, has a real shot to make the Rangers open night lineup. And as for the latter portion of that, to begin with, there is something that we have to talk about quickly here as far as something that I think could drastically improve the chances of an Othman or a Cooley making this opening night lineup for the New York Rangers and a definite X factor that could seriously contribute to them making the team one way or the other is what could happen with the Rangers as far as what they do with the players currently penciled in to their roster. And there's two players specifically because, you know, if the Rangers make a trade between now and opening night, which they could or they might not, it could definitely impact the chances of a Will Cooley or a Brian Othman making the roster. And as far as guys who could realistically be moved by the Rangers between now and once again, the start of the regular season, the two that stand out for me more than anybody else are Vitaly Krasov and Julian Gauthier. With Krasov, you guys know the deal by now. It's a whole saga. We would need an entire episode to go through everything that's happened with Krasov since the Rangers drafted him right up to current day. But just a really tumultuous relationship between him and the Rangers, uh, specifically Chris Jury, pretty much ever since the Rangers drafted him. And we do want to keep the focus of today's episode on some of these other prospects. So we'll keep Krasov talk to somewhat of a minimum. But the bottom line, it's just been very up and down between him and the Rangers. And frankly, more downs than ups. Uh, the good news with Krasov is that just a day or two ago, he arrived to New York City. So he's here early and ready to go, presumably for Ranger training camp. So baby steps, I suppose. But yeah, again, the long and short of it is that I think there's a decent chance still that he gets traded before opening night, given once again, the chilly relationship between Vitaly Krasov and the New York Rangers. And as far as Julian Gauthier is concerned, I've stood up for him in the past on this podcast. Coming into this past season, I mentioned how he's still kind of my dark horse. He's somebody that I think could eventually, you know, get to a good level at the NHL. Maybe he's somebody that ends up being kind of like a third line type player. But he had a lot of opportunities this past season and did next to nothing with them. They bring in a bunch of other guys at the trade deadline. Julian Gauthier firmly squeezed out of the lineup. So I think at this point, you know, given that Gauthier has had his opportunities under two different coaching staffs, no less, it's probably time for somebody else to get a chance. And on top of everything I just mentioned, uh, Julian Gauthier, of course, has requested a trade from the New York Rangers. So that could easily happen as well. And as far as other trade candidates, I mean, Ryan Reeves, I think, is probably an option. 
And then I don't see the Rangers trading Philip Heedle or Capo Caco, but you just never know for sure. I think the Rangers look at Heedle and they're not so sure that they'll be able to hang on to him past this upcoming season with so many players uh, needing pay bumps next season, namely Alexi Lafreniere, Keandre Miller, and even Philip Heedle himself. So uh, Heedle might end up being a cap casualty for the Rangers. And Capo Caco, you know, again, I don't see the Rangers moving him. But they've yet to agree on a new contract for this upcoming season. They've yet to come to terms. And obviously, you know, with him being benched, uh, healthy scratched rather, in game six against the Tampa Bay Lightning with the season on the line, uh, that I don't think necessarily bodes spectacularly for Capo Caco's future with the Rangers. Now, it's entirely possible that everybody lets bygones be bygones. He comes back this season and plays the best hockey that we've seen him play. But yeah, I'm sure, you know, between Caco and the Rangers, that had to have left at least a little bit of a sour taste in Caco's mouth, uh, once again, being scratched with the Rangers season on the line. But all this is to say that, once again, guys like Othman or Cooley or whoever else, they have a much better chance of making this team if one or more of these guys, such as Krasov or Gauthier, gets traded, because that would obviously open up a spot for them. And we're going to go ahead and talk about Brandon Othman in just a second. I figured year that makes the most sense he's somebody that I think among all Ranger prospects probably has the most buzz had just a killer season in the OHL last year and was the first first round pick of the Chris Drury era so we'll talk about Offman in just a second but first just want to let everybody know today's episode of Locked On New York Rangers is brought to you by Built Bar from the people who invented healthy and tasty comes the latest gift to your taste buds You've probably tried the amazing Coconut Brownie Chunk Built Bar, but guess what? Your friends at Built have given Coconut Brownie Chunk the Puffs treatment. That's right, the Coconut Brownie Chunk Built Bar flavor you love in a deliciously chewy marshmallow covered in 100% real chocolate. It's like a fluffy cloud of Coconut Brownie goodness. Coconut Brownie Chunk Puffs are only here for a limited time. Go to Built.com right now to make sure you don't miss out. They are going fast because they taste amazing. The best part about Built Puffs, of course, is that they taste amazing, but you can enjoy them guilt-free because they are actually good for you. Delicious coconut, rich sweet brownie, creamy marshmallow. Stop fantasizing. Get to Built.com right now to order your box of coconut brownie chunk Built Puffs right now. Go to Built.com, use promo code LOCKS15, and get 15% off your order. Use promo code LOCKS15. All right, just want to thank you guys for making Lockdown New York Rangers your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. Which NFL stars move the betting line the most? Starting July 18th, Lockdown gives you the 50 most valuable players in the NFL from the odds makers at Bet Online. Available July 18th on Lockdown NFL, wherever you get your podcasts, and on YouTube. All right, so as promised, let's kind of kick things off here today as far as the prospects are concerned by talking about Brandon Othman, somebody that has a ton of buzz, and rightfully so when you look at what he's done since the Rangers have drafted him and the season that he put up with the OHL's Flint Firebirds this past season. More on that in just a second, but just to kind of quickly recap here, he went number 16 to the Rangers in 2021. Obviously, that's a first-round pick. He's 19 years old, and once again, as I just mentioned, set the OHL on fire last season. It was his second season in the OHL. His first season, in 2019 2020, he had 33 points in 55 games. So decent production. But this past season, just absolutely ridiculous. Uh, he was the captain of the team. He scored 50 goals and picked up 47 assists in just 66 games. 97 points in 66 games. And then he had another 24 points in 19 playoff games and led his team to the OHL semifinals. But you know, with Othman, by all accounts, the thing that really stands out, he's got that really intriguing mix of both skill and snarl. That's always really nice to see. It's always uh, fun to root for players that are of that ilk. He apparently has a lethal shot. I mean, you probably didn't need me to tell you that after I just told you that he had 50 goals in 67 games. I think that probably goes without saying. And apparently, uh, once again, another standout Ranger development camp for Brandon Othman. The last thing that they did on Friday was they had, you know, a uh, team-wide scrimmage. And there were 37 players there. So obviously a lot of guys, you know, getting in some work. Uh, Brandon Othman scored a goal in that scrimmage. And he also, and there was a video of this circulating on Twitter, he also did a great job back-checking to prevent Will Cooley from getting a breakaway attempt on that Friday scrimmage. And obviously, you know, Cooley is one of the guys uh, with whom Othman is competing, potentially for a spot on the New York Rangers. Now, 
does he have a chance to make the NHL roster this season? I would say yes. I would say the odds are slightly against it, although we have seen in the past that the Rangers, they don't have any qualms about, you know, if somebody seems like they're ready, if they're young or whatever the case might be, they'll give them a chance. They'll kind of throw them into the deep end and say sink or swim. And in a lot of instances, uh, that's really panned out for the Rangers over these past couple of seasons. I think uh, Keandre Miller, a great example of that. Adam Fox is very young when he debuted. Braden Schneider was very young when he debuted. So, with Othman having just, you know, basically set the OHL on fire last season, like I mentioned, uh, you know, a lot of people might think like, okay, so maybe put him with the Wolf Pack in the AHL and see what he can do there. It's a nice idea in theory, but uh, because Othman is only 19 years old and won't turn 20 until January 5th, uh, he cannot play for the AHL. The Rangers would be required to send him back to the OHL if he does not make the NHL roster for opening night. So that's kind of an interesting caveat there. It's almost like a situation where it's all or nothing. You know, you can't just put him in the AHL and, uh, you know, have him one step away. He's either back in the OHL or he's on your NHL roster and ready to rock and roll for the Rangers at the start of this upcoming season. But again, there's a ton to like about Brian Offman. This guy, like I said, just completely went off uh, in the OHL this past season. And it's also being reported that he will likely play for Canada at the World Junior Championships. That tournament will be held in Edmonton from August 9 to August 20. Decent chance that there's going to be a good amount of Rangers participating at the World Juniors this season. So I'm definitely looking forward to that. It's always a really fun tournament. Uh, but this is what Offman had to say uh, during the Ranger development camp. And I'll figure as far as Offman is concerned, I can kind of leave you guys with this. The goal is to try and make the team the best I can. I know they're a strong team with good young players and good leadership too. If I can make the team, it'd be great for me and the organization. I had a good season. I played well for myself and Flint. If I can come in with that amount of confidence into Rangers camp and make the team, it would be something special. And yes, I absolutely echo those sentiments. We're going to see Brian Offman sooner or later. You know what? The Rangers, if you ever wanted to like really make a splash as far as a uh, trade is concerned. I think Brandon Hoffman would be a heck of a trade ship. You know, I mentioned this idea getting toward, uh, you know, the trade deadline this past season. By no means was I pushing for Hoffman to be traded. I just floated the idea that if you really want the Rangers to do something splashy, uh, he'd be somebody that could potentially be included. But I don't think there's any way the Rangers could or should or will trade this guy. Uh, he just looks like he's a star in the making. Somebody that, again, brings that nice combination of skill and snarl. And I think sooner or later, he's going to be making an impact for the New York Rangers at the NHL level. And like I said earlier, if the Rangers trade Vitaly Krasov and or Julian Gauthier, especially both of them, if both those guys get dealt before the season starts, then I think the door is wide open for Brandon Hoffman to potentially make the team out of camp this season. I don't say that lightly, but... I mean, at that point, you got to fill out your roster somehow. And obviously, with somebody like Brandon Hoffman, there's a heck of a lot more upside with somebody like him than there is with, you know, somebody like Julian Gauthier or somebody like, I mean, I guess Kraftsoff still has some off upside, but obviously it hasn't really gone according to plan since the Rangers drafted him. So again, if one or both of Gauthier and Kraftsoff gets traded, then I think uh, Hoffman might even have the inside track to make this team. I don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves, but the Rangers are obviously high on him and for very, very good reason as well. We're talking about a couple other Ranger prospects and just some notes from the development camp. We will turn our attention to Will Cooley and we will do that in just a second. All right, Will Cooley, another guy with a lot of hype and somebody that I think Ranger fans are probably itching to see at a certain point get a chance with the New York Rangers and we'll see if that happens this season. But again, uh, another standout development camp for Will Cooley. He stood out in a big way last year. Apparently, it was more of the same this year. By all accounts, really throwing his weight around at the scrimmage on Friday, the uh, camp concluding scrimmage, and was just relentless in the corners, You know, fighting for the puck, was relentless in front of the net, uh, looking for deflections and rebounds. He ended up scoring a goal in the scrimmage. You know, We already mentioned how he had a breakaway opportunity that was broken up by Brandon Othman, but it sounds like Cooley uh, nevertheless lit the lamp as part of that Friday scrimmage. But you know, Will Cooley, somebody else that uh, the Rangers are very, very high on. And you look at what he's done since the Rangers drafted him. Uh, you look at the fact that he's six foot three, 212 pounds, plays with a lot of physicality. Very, very easy to see why. Uh, the Rangers took him in the second round back in 2020. He went number 60 overall and just had a whale of a season for himself in the OHL, as did Brennan Othman. Uh, Cooley was the captain of the Windsor Spitfires. He skated in 59 games with them. Scored 43 goals, had 37 assists, so 80 points in 59 games is also a plus 22 in that time. And then in the playoffs, 
25 playoff games, 15 goals, 16 assists, 31 points. So obviously, just lighting it up. It's probably at a point where there's not really a whole lot left for him to do in the OHL. Uh, that was his third season with the Windsor Spitfires. He also, in 2020-2021, skated in 18 games with the Hartford Wolfpack, scored two goals, dished out three assists, and picked up five points and was a minus four in that time, which kind of leads me into my next point that, unlike Brian Offman, Will Cooley is eligible to begin the season with the Hartford Wolfpack. And so if you're looking at kind of Offman versus Cooley and which one ends up making his Ranger debut first, I would probably lean a little bit toward Cooley. I mean, it really just comes down to whether the Rangers are going to allow Brian Offman to make the Ranger team out of training camp or send him back to the OHL. Once we know the answer to that, uh, we pretty much have the answer to which one of Offman or Cooley will make the debut first. Because if Cooley, or excuse me, if Offman gets sent back to the OHL and Cooley is on the Wolfpack, which seems likely. I think Cooley could be the guy that ends up being uh, the first man up in terms of the first player that the Rangers would look to to call up to the NHL roster, at least among forwards. You know, guys like Zach Jones, Nils Lundqvist, guys like that who might start the season in the AHL might be ahead of him, but they're obviously defensemen. So I think Cooley is somebody you might try to catch lightning in the bottle if you're the New York Rangers. And again, I think there's a very, very, very good chance that we see Will Cooley uh, make his debut for the Rangers at some point this season. I would frankly be surprised if we do not see that. I mentioned a couple of defensemen in Zach Jones and Nils Lundqvist just a second ago, and for the record, those two did not participate in the Rangers development camp. The Rangers essentially saying that uh, those two have kind of quote-unquote graduated from development camp because obviously both of them have played a handful of games in the NHL with the Rangers, uh, 25 career games for Lundqvist, 22 career games for Zach Jones. But one defenseman who did participate and somebody that you know, is at least something of a threat to make his NHL debut this season would be Matthew Robertson. This is somebody that's kind of caught my eye recently. I think there's a good chance that we end up seeing him play with the New York Rangers. They've got that sixth and final defenseman spot wide open. It seems like, uh, you know, the competition is on as far as who might be there on the Rangers opening night roster, who might the sixth defenseman be, because the top five are all very well spoken for. But Matthew Robertson, you know, Probably still a little bit behind Nils Lundqvist and Zach Jones, given the fact that the two of them have already made their NHL debuts. But by that same token, both of them have already had a chance. I wouldn't be surprised if among the three of them, we end up seeing Matthew Robertson with the Rangers first. I mean, the odds are probably against it. Robertson would probably have to make the team out of training camp, which I'm not so sure they're going to do. Wouldn't shock me to see the Rangers uh, leave him with the Wolfpack for a little bit more seasoning. And then maybe you look at him as kind of a midseason call up. But I do have my eye on Robertson once again as a potential sleeper. Uh, something that he's got working in his favor is that he was actually Braden Schneider's partner in the AHL. That was the top defense pairing for the Wolfpack last season, at least until Braden Schneider got called up to the NHL. By all accounts, the two of them have good chemistry, so you got to figure that would only help Robertson's cause as you know a potential sleeper and somebody that could eventually uh, work his way onto the New York Rangers this season. Robertson doesn't bring the kind of offense that Lundqvist or Jones does, but he's a big defender, six foot four, 201 pounds, and uh, apparently has displayed very good mobility uh, you know, for a defenseman of his size. And you know, for full context here, he was a second-round pick in 2019, went number 49 overall to the Rangers in that draft. He is now 21 years old, and again, somebody that I think the Rangers are going to want to take a look at sooner rather than later. As we've mentioned, Lundqvist and Jones have both gotten some opportunities, gotten some looks at the NHL. I would imagine once again that uh, you know Matthew Robertson eventually gets a crack with the Rangers. And something else that I'll mention real quick here. Don't rule out the possibility of the Rangers at least occasionally rolling with seven defensemen and 11 forwards at some point this upcoming season. The Rangers, as far as forwards are concerned, don't necessarily have the depth that they seem to at defensemen. And we saw Gerard Gallant and the coaching staff roll with seven defensemen. Not very often. It was really just every once in a blue moon last season, but it is something that they'll go to from time to time. So uh, that's something that I would look for for the Rangers as well, because there's a lot of young, promising defensemen on this team. And I think sooner or later, the Rangers want to throw them out there and see what they can do. And, you know, Matthew Robertson might be one of those guys. Again, you take somebody in the second round, you're looking for them to eventually, uh, hopefully, become a cornerstone of your franchise. And I think they'll give Matthew Robertson every opportunity to do just that. Very, very curious. You know, I, I cannot wait for Ranger training camp and just to be able to track that six defenseman battle between Robertson. Maybe you could even throw Hunter Skinner in there, as well as Zach Jones and Nils Lundqvist. A lot of good, young, promising, upcoming defensemen uh, all gunning for one spot. So it's going to be great competition. And uh, I can't wait to just kick back and watch it. And this is what Robertson had to say uh, regarding, you know, where he's at right now in his development and the whole nine yards. He said, 
My goal next year is to make the Rangers. It's a big offseason for me, and it's going to be a big year next year. I learned a lot last year just being in Hartford and in my little time spent up with the Rangers, practicing with them and trying to just see how they are up there and how they conduct themselves. Having that experience now and getting all that under my belt and knowing a little bit more about what to expect next year, the urgency definitely goes up. And what he's talking about there, he was actually one of seven players that the Rangers caught up from the Wolfpack uh, late last season. You know, guys that are there in a pinch if there's injuries or whatever might happen. Uh, but the Rangers uh, called up Matthew Robertson. They also caught up Tim Gettinger, uh, Zach Jones, Lori Pahuniemi, Nils Lundqvist, Jared Tenorti, and Keith Kincaid. So obviously, you know, he got to at least spend some time with the New York Rangers, even though he did not make his debut couple other notes from the camp. A uh, friend of the show, Vince Mercagliano, he wrote an article, actually several articles about the development camp, and uh, he believes that Bobby Trevino is the MVP of both the Friday scrimmage as well as the training camp as a whole. We talked about Trevino not that long ago signing uh, a contract with the New York Rangers. He was undrafted, but uh, somebody that's very undersized. He's just five foot eight, 161 pounds, but obviously plays a lot bigger than that, plays with a lot of heart, very scrappy player, and very fast as well. Just one of those guys that has that motor that does not quit. He is 23 years old, so he's a little bit older than, you know, some of the other prospects. Not that 23 is ancient or anything like that, but he is a little bit older than, you know, Cooley or Robertson or Offman, some of the guys that we've already talked about. Um, but Trevino, he scored a goal in the camp concluding scrimmage that happened on Friday. Had a couple of chances earlier than that. Apparently, uh, Dylan Grant robbed him a couple of times, but he eventually uh, you know, scored on a wrist shot, gave his team a 2-0 lead in the scrimmage. So, yeah, he's off to a good start, and uh, we'll see what ends up happening with him, but maybe uh, somebody that's a little bit of a dark horse. He was the captain for the University of Massachusetts. They win it all, and he had, in that season, 37 games, 20 goals, and 29 assists. So, uh, we'll see. Definitely somebody intriguing, somebody to keep an eye on. Uh, one of those guys who, not the biggest guy on the rink, far from it, but plays a lot of heart, and somebody that, you know, just going by... The way everybody describes him, somebody that if you ever got a chance with the Rangers, I think would probably become a pretty popular player among the fan base. Also of note is that Adam Sakura apparently had a really impressive camp as well. He was the Rangers' first pick in this past year's draft. Of course, they did not have a first-round pick, but they took Sakura in the second round at number 63 overall. Sakura just 17 years old. And again, kind of like Trevino, not the biggest guy, 5'11", 174 pounds, but he makes up for it with that feistiness, uh, extremely high motor, high hockey IQ, uh, tries to get under the skin of his opponents. And apparently, once again, he did very, very well at the uh, development camp for the New York Rangers. And this is what Jed Ortmeier had to say. Ortmeier, obviously, a former New York Ranger and the current director of player development. How could you not like him? He's got a smile on his face the whole time. He's just positive. He wants to work, and he was just excited to be here. He's got great energy in the room, so it's fun to get to know him and work with him this week. And at the conclusion of camp, the Rangers actually had Sakura sign his three-year entry-level contract. My understanding is that this next season, he is likely to play for the Medicine Hat Tigers of the WHL or return to Slovakia to play for HK Nitra. And we'll see what happens there. Hopefully, uh, they'll do something that makes sense for Sakura's development, and we'll see what happens. Probably will be a while before we see him in the NHL. Uh, he doesn't seem to be as ready-made to go. I mean, for starters, he's 17, but uh, he doesn't seem to be, you know, on the verge of breaking through the way that some of these other guys do. But the Rangers just drafted him, and they obviously have high hopes for him uh, going forward here. And Sakura also scored a goal in the uh, scrimmage that ended the camp on Friday. I figure we can call it there for today, though. Just wanted to give you guys a little bit of an update on the development camp, as well as, you know, how close some of these prospects might be to eventually making their debut with the New York Rangers. I'd be surprised if, between Offman and Cooley, I'd be very, very surprised if we don't see at least one of them uh, rocking the Ranger blue at some time this upcoming season. Uh, but like I said, you know, we can pretty much call it there. Just a reminder to send me your Artemi Panarin Game 7 stories. If you have not done so already, we will get to that at some point in the offseason here. Basically, I'm just going to kick back and uh read your stories, how you reacted, who you were with, how you celebrated, when Artemi Panarin scored in Game 7 to eliminate the Pittsburgh Penguins. So definitely uh, send those to me if you have not done so already. And just a reminder that we will bring back the Locked On New York Rangers Fantasy League next season as well. I've already heard from a couple of you guys who are you know, planning on coming back next season. That's all you have to do. Just send me an email and your spot is secure, uh, provided that you played last season. If you did not play last season, email me or DM me sooner rather than later to kind of save your spot in line in the event that we have a couple of players 
from last year who don't return this year. So definitely uh, go ahead and do that. And uh, just your daily reminder once again that Tyler Mott is still an unrestricted free agent. We will see how that situation shakes out. But that will do it for today, guys. Once again, if you'd like to get in touch with this podcast, please send an email to lockedonnyrangers at gmail.com. Once again, that is lockedonnyrangers at gmail.com. And definitely give us a follow on Twitter as well at LO underscore NY underscore Rangers. Once again, that is at LO underscore NY underscore Rangers. And definitely make sure to subscribe to the Locked On New York Rangers YouTube channel. Thanks again, guys. I'll see you next time. Thanks for making Locked On New York Rangers your first listen every day. In our next episode, we're going to be talking with Chris Maselli and Kyle Sullivan of Locked On Colorado Avalanche. We're going to be discussing the uh, big trade that sent Alex Georgiev to the Colorado Avalanche. I'm also going to talk to those guys and try to figure out what in the world Went so wrong with Patrick Nemeth this past season. He obviously had previously uh, played for the Avalanche. And uh, just going to discuss some general hockey stuff. Going to be a good time. Now make your second listen, Locked On NHL. Locked On experts give you a daily 30-minute podcast on all things NHL all year long. Stay up to date on everything in the hockey world. Locked On NHL, your daily 30-minute NHL podcast.